when formed or banned, we're all well manned to journey afar to the promised land. The golden ore is rich in store on the banks of the Sacramento shore. Ho, boys, ho! To California, there's plenty of gold in the world, I'm told, on the banks of the Sacramento. As off we roam, o'er the dark seas foam, we'll never forget kind friends at home. But memory still brings to mind the love of friends we left behind. Ho, boys, ho! To California, there's plenty of gold in the world, I'm told, in the banks of the Sacramento. We'll expect our share of the coarsest fare and sometimes sleep in the open air. On the cold, damp ground, we'll all sleep sound except when the wolves go howling round. Ho, boys, ho, to California, oh. There's plenty of gold in the world, I'm told, on the banks of the Sacramento. As we explore the distant shore, filling our pockets with shining ore, how it will sound as a shout goes round, filling our pockets with a dozen of pounds. Ho, boys, ho, to California, oh. There's plenty of gold in the world, I'm told, on the banks of the Sacramento. Gold is there most everywhere, we dig it out rich with an iron bar. Where it's thick with spade or pick, we take out chunks as big as a brick. Ho, boys, ho, to California, oh. There's plenty of gold, as I've been told, on the banks of the Sacramento. Then ho, boys, ho, to California, oh. There's plenty of gold, as I've been told, on the banks of the Sacramento. Great granddad, when the land was young, he barred the door with a wagon tongue, for the times was rough and danger mocked, and he said his prayers with his shotgun cocked. He was a citizen, tough and grim, danger was duck soup to him. He ate corn pone and bacon fat, great grandson would starve on that. Great granddad was a busy man, he cooked his grub in a frying pan, and he picked his teeth with his hunting knife, and he wore the same suit all of his life. Twenty-one children came to bless the old man's home in the wilderness. Doubt this statement if you can, great granddad was a busy man. Twenty-one boys and how they grew. Tall and strong on the bacon too They slept on the floor with the dogs and the cats And they hunted in the woods with their coonskin caps Hi ladies and gentlemen I hope you're all doing good and feeling great I know I'm doing a heck of a lot better, feeling strong. Um, well, I should say stronger. I don't feel real strong, but I tell you, I got some of the best doctors and nurses around. And they keep this stubborn fool going. So we're going to do the Russell Barlow video. I wanted to give you guys a little taste of the Russell Green River Works Company. It's been around since 1834, I believe, it said on the intro. And they did a lot more than just the iconic Russell Barlow. So we'll take a look at the Barlow in a minute. First, I want to show you some, some stuff from uh, the Russell Green Riverworks Company. I wanted something in my collection that I knew for sure was pre-1900 and I found these on eBay I think I showed them to you guys once before but um, they were advertised as Civil War era cutlery and I figure you know there's really no way to date them but um, you know e uh, Civil War would have been 1860 so even if these were 1880, that would make them uh, 143 years old, if my math is right. And 
this is what I wanted right there, that stamp. J. Russell Company Green River Works. Now this patina is a little patchy, so I don't use this knife. I've thought about cleaning it, but I think I'll leave it. But see, you know, this part right here is what's going to start it to, um, the steel will start pitting because of that. If anyone knows a way how I can remove the, the patchy part but keep the natural patina on it, let me know. But I don't think, I think if I try and clean this, I'm going to take off the, you know, it took 150 years to get this way, so I don't want to take it all off. But anyway, if you guys got any ideas, put them in the comments. These are full tang um, kitchenware and this one has bone handles natural smooth bone that's what the natural cow bone looks like after 150 years and these are um, pewter caps and you'll see they go all the way up here this one's got a little crack in it but you can see the blade goes all the way through and is probably two pins underneath these um, decorative little, I don't know what you'd call them, little spears, I guess, kind of. And then the pin in the center. But there, that I know I have an original Russell besides the Barlow. Um guarantee if I ever seen that 1855 buoy that was in the intro I would sell a whole bunch of my pieces not the Russells probably GEC just to get it I think that's one of the cool 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 looking um buoys as you'll ever find now this one here I do use around the kitchen Works good for um, flipping meats and vegetables in the skillet. And it has a little bit of that extra corrosion there that's going to start it to pit. But you'll look at this nice smooth patina on the forks. Again, same thing. Bone handles, pewter trim. This one's all intact. Full tang, three pins. So, just gorgeous pieces. And it would be kind of cool to use these uh, bone scales to make a uh, barlow out of, which I thought about doing. Now, this one really quick here. This possibly is an original Russell Company um, knife. It's called a Dadley, and he's the one that designed it. It's an all-purpose knife, hunting, fishing, um, bushcraft, uh, cookware, everything. I use it when I got it. First thing I did was uh, went to the butcher and have him uh, slice me out a one and a half inch sirloin steak, <clears throat> which ain't the best meat, but I marinated it and gave it a nice dry rub and came out pretty good. But I figured since it was a beefy steak, this would be perfect for it. Um, now what I mean by this might be an original is somewhere in between 1941 when the Russell Company closed in 1970, um, mid-70s, that's what this one is. Russell, I, I guess probably the family, sold the name to Dexter which was a kitchen and housewares uh, online company. Um, but the thing was, Russell told them, we'll give you the name, but you have to build them exactly like we did. So there's no way to date these either. This, I got lucky, I was able to date this to mid-70s. But it's a Dexter Russell. Um, but you'll see the constructions pretty much the same well at least this one is and this is a 
um, copy, if you go back to the intro and you'll see them knives that were in the catalog, this is the one that was on the top. Um, but this is also a Dexter Russell. And you could tell with the Dexter Russells, um, the chamfering and the hafting is done pretty professionally. And if you look at the way the brass pins are cut, they're smooth. So when you look at the Dadley, you can see these were cut with a coping saw, which is kind of unique. And these came, I seen one other picture of these, and they came with a completely a squared off handle, just a block. Um, so I'm thinking that um, whoever bought this sanded this down or used a file. And you can see it's kind of like something that I would come out with if I did it. So I'm thinking this possibly could be a original Russell. The etch would be right here and it would say the same thing as this except stainless because this is carbon. You can see the patina on it. So it would say Russell Green River Works right here. But it's worn off because I've cleaned it so many times. But I really like this knife. And it possibly is an Old West Russell that might have um, might have went with a family that settled out west after moving from the east coast. So there's kind of my kitchenware. All these get used except this one. This is kind of my slicer. I use the work sharp sharpener on this and put a 14 degree edge on it so it's extremely sharp. Uh, it probably needs to be stropped, but let's see what happens. You know, I you see me with band aids on my fingers, most of the time it's from this knife. Yeah, it needs to be stropped. But you can get a real wicked edge on that. And this is a fun little knife to use around the kitchen too. I gotta clean that gross patina off. This is also carbon. You can see some blue from cutting hot meats. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that the the Russell Company, um, they were more known for this kind of stuff. And then they decided to come out with the Barlow. I think the first Barlow they made was in the late 1800s. Um, the Barlow I'm going to show you is the very last run that they made from 1933 to 1940. And remember I told you it got misplaced? And this is how it got misplaced, or how I found it. I usually need a toothpick after I eat. I got a little gap in my back molar there. And I usually keep a Victorinox SD on the key clump. And you can see there's no SD on there. <clears throat> so I kind of sat down and thought and I remembered, oh, I did a video on my Victorinox and I used the SD in the video. So I went and got my box of Victorinox because I really wanted the toothpick. And guess what was in there? A bunch of Victorinox. And down in the corner, ha ha ha, there she is, my baby. This was one of the first collector pieces I got for my collection. And I got it for a measly $55 with no cracks, all original. It's been uh, verified and authenticated and appraised at $160. And that was like 
geez, that was way before I got sick. That was probably four years ago, three years ago that I had it appraised. And there's your cool uh, bolster stamp. Now this one, I like to carry it when I go visit Pops. Pops is 87 now. I'm so, so blessed to have both my parents still alive. And I tell you, my Pops has really been in my corner during my tough times. I mean, he drives 80 miles sometimes just so he can be with me when I go to my uh, cancer screenings. But check that out. And, you know, I carry it around with me when I know he's going to be around just because it, like I said, it reminds me of him. And because it was made anywhere from 1933 to 1940, Pops was bo born in 1935. So there's a one in seven chance that this was made the same day my dad was born. Ain't that cool? So it has half stops, and the main blade has plenty of snap, still a lot of steel on there. Check that out. And this is called the uh, the last run was the the Russell Arch, and that's because if you look at the name Russell. It's in an arch. It's not a straight line. They call them the Russell Arch and the Russell Straight Line. But Russell Straight Lines are older than this. Because like I said, this is the last run they made was the Russell Arch. And you can see that the Russell Arch comes in a little better here. There's Russell and then USA underneath. And there's a little R with the arrow through it, which is pretty cool. Nothing on that side. But this also kind of reminds me of my dad because it's kind of got a little gimp to it, too. <laughs> and I've told him about that. I said, yeah, you're both weathered and beaten, but you're still, still looking handsome as ever. So... Yeah, and you don't really need a lot of spring. I mean, it is, there's no detent there at all. But you would be cutting this way anyway, so no big deal. And it does, after it gets to the half stop, you got to kind of push it to there, but then it'll snap down on its own. So at least it closes. The Russell Barlow. And I, I believe they used oxbone. I read somewhere um, that they used oxbone because they thought that um, the ox was, uh, or the DNA in an oxen was uh, stronger than that of a... Uh, regular cattle cow I don't know you know I read it in a thread so take take that for what it's worth but um, it does kind of make sense because it's, it feels like it's a harder bone and at just about every one of these you see has a cracked scale and um, the fakes that are out there aren't really fakes per se. It's just someone that knows what they're doing will buy three of them. Like they might find one with both the scales still intact, but the blade will be sharpened out. And then they'll buy one with a good good blade, and they just piece them together from three three junkers to make a good one. It's all Russell parts, but it's really, truly not original. And this one, you can see the steel pins are definitely 
33-ish, that's for sure. All steel construction, steel bolster. And I believe um, our friend Logan Stout over at Knife Thoughts had started a club, a Russell Barlow club. And I was thinking on getting in it. You have to have a original Russell to join. But um, I'm not much for clubs. I'm kind of a solo kind of guy. So there you have it. The historic and well set, uh, sought after Russell Barlow. That's right there. That's, that's what a Barlow was supposed to look like. Of course, there was still a lot of Barlows that um, came across the pond from Sheffield, but um, John Russell was the first one to mass produce them. And I read you could find these um, pretty much in any hardware store, any tool store in America at one time. That's how popular they were, which kind of is amazing because they're hard to find. I guess people just used them up. So, my friends, there you go. I hope I gave you a little bit of history on it. And if you guys can find one at a decent price, all the power to you. I wouldn't pay too much for them and um, look at them close to make sure they weren't. Uh, an another way you can tell if they were faked is everything will be clean here on the bolster stamp. And Russell was just turn churning them out um, and they never changed the dye. So you'll see at the end here the feathers aren't punched in there crisp along with the R up here so if it looks too good to be true it probably is so there you guys go until next time my friends take care peace bye bye mm -hmm.